Zach had a pretty tough shooting night in that in, in Puerto Rico, but he hit some clutch shots when you needed him. How do you like how he responded to that? Yeah, he's got that that uh, thing about him. I think the best is yet to come for him as well because he's starting to learn what's a, what his shot selection. But like I said, he's when he shoots that jump shot, whether it's off the dribble or off the catch, it's hard for people to get to. And uh, he's really worked hard at this, and, and I look forward to having a break with him between the semester breaks. He can get more time, uh, like it's more comfortable. And uh, defensively, he has a he, he doesn't. It's not like typical freshman on the floor where. He's a liability. He's really helped us there. Rob? Status update on Stauskas and how that ends too. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he hasn't been able to do anything at full go yet, so we'll see more. We'll see how he does today and see if he can, he can play. Uh, if he can play well today in practice, then uh, we'll, we'll play him tomorrow. If he's not moving the way he needs to move today in practice, uh, we probably wouldn't use him. And I'll just follow up with McGeary. Do you plan on keeping him in the starting lineup based on? Yeah, what you're I, I, well, so it depends on Nick's situation, really. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had one more guy that can do some of the think creative type of thing that Nick does. That's why, even though Nick and Mitch are very different players, they can create some things. We're trying to get as many active offensive players as we could in there. So uh, we'll just wait and see how, how it goes because uh, they give us obviously very difficult matchups. So Mitch would be the swing guy, whether Nick goes or not, not Jordan yeah, being the swing yeah, guy. Yeah, right. I would think we'll stay with the same thing if Nick can't go. The same, same starting line. Joe, uh, what are you seeing from Duke, and, and what's sort of the unique challenge? All well, the same thing, you know, right now. And now Hood, everybody talks a lot about Jabari Parker, and obviously he's special. He's, uh, he comes in there with the uh, – he does things that, that Kobe did as a first-year pro, and LeBron did as a first-year pro. I mean, he's a tremendous, tremendous player. Uh, but Hood is really good, and there's a kid that's in his, I think they have seven players that are in their third or fourth year of college. Uh, even though they have some young players playing, uh, it's, it's, uh, Hood has really been good, and uh, they run a lot of things through the two of them, and obviously their, their guards are experienced as well, and bring an awful lot of just uh, experienced guards know how to win, and Duke's won a lot of games. John? Would have been to Iowa State, but what will this setting do for your team at this point? I think it'd be very similar to Iowa State. I think there's there's several venues around in the country that have this type of uh, setting. Iowa State's being one of them. I mean, there's 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 more than a few. That's why college basketball is so special. But when you look at those those type of environments, Duke's one of those special ones as well. So it's 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 another opportunity for us. That you, you you don't remember. You don't, re you, you don't remember every win. You remember wins against top flight, top coach teams on the road. And that's the objective. I'm trying to go down there and, and get one and come back with a victory. Defensively, have you kind of mapped out how you're going to uh, build against Parker and Hood? Yeah. <laughs> Would you be willing to share those things? No. <laughs> no, I mean, you have to play good defense. I mean, you have to, they obviously are very good players, and we're going to have to guard them really well. And, just do the best that we can to make sure that they have to take tough shots and then you don't give them second opportunities after that. Uh, but they're a low turnover team, they're a high assist team. Um, finding the, the weaknesses here are very hard to find. And so uh, they, if, if there is any, we haven't found them yet. But you know, just basically you got to hope that you can contest enough shots and then sometimes the ball just doesn't go in. Uh, I think when we beat them here two, uh, four years ago, the ball didn't go in. I think it's a really good shot. The ball didn't go in. We need one of those opportunities, too. But we, we got to help guard them enough so that they help the ball not go in. Back over here, Brian. You mentioned before with the 1-3-1 that Glenn was the only guy that kind of knew that position strong enough where you felt comfortable continuing to do it. Is that just one of those anomaly things or something that you well, it's, it's, it's on it's on one side of the floor. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, if you don't play the 1-3-1 the right, you give up a layup or a wide open three. So you have to, while we continue to work with that with our team, we get them to understand if we use it again. Um, you know, Zach's, there's a learning curve for Zach right now that he's, he, that he's grasping, he's trying to get better every day at. But it's a completely opposite principles, not completely, but very different than your principles in man. So you'll resort to what you know, and then all of a sudden that will give up a layup or a three. So that's, it's, it's not, it's just Derek, it's him, it's a, whole bunch of people and just getting people used to playing it because we haven't done it a great deal.